Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Julie Mann. I'm also known as the Habit Fixer and I love helping women regain their mojo and age well. And I do that through EFT, which is a really simple tapping technique, nutrition, skincare and digital products. And today I'm joined by a woman with an amazing name. She's called Bryony Roundtree. I just absolutely love that. And if you don't know her already, she's a coach and also a mental health first aider. So welcome, Bryony. Hello. Good to see you. Now, I know that you're going to be talking about the habit of choosing, aren't you? Yes. And um, thanks for having me. Pleasure. So I'm just going to hand straight over to you. Brilliant. Okay. Right. So, yeah, being in choice. I think this is my a lot of my learning around creating habits or practices, whatever. Um, you know, I think different different habits have a different tone to them or a different purpose. And that's that's partly what this is about. We know that our head brains are really powerful. Um, they are there to keep us safe, but they also make a lot of stuff up. Um, and we get to use, like the rest of our system, we get to choose how we use our head brains. So a lot of our habits can be driven by fear or stress, um, avoidance, wanting to start up a positive habit and then avoidant, avoiding it. The avoidance can be the habit that we actually create. Or defensiveness, we think about the behaviour patterns, whether that's within family, within work. Sometimes we can have these habits of, um, that come from different places within relationship as well and in our behaviours. So those habits aren't consciously chosen. We're not we're not thinking about how we want to respond. We're, we're reacting and coming from a place where our emotions are leading us rather than we're going, right, what am I feeling? Okay, I'm choosing to use this as information and making my choice. So it's about making that, you know, checking in and making informed decisions. And we've got these, as I say, a whole system, not just our head brain, we've got a whole system and our, ho our hormones particularly are this exquisite orchestration that we can work with. But we have, I believe, a responsibility to take up the role of the conductor <laughs> and, and take the lead of our systems. So I'm, I'm someone that I love ideas. I love sparking possibilities. I love beginnings of things. I would be great working with um, people who love processes and complete finishes. <laughs> So I'd be there all excited, like a pack of magpies of shiny things. Um, so I really have to work on keeping things going. I can start habits and I, I like trying out things, which I also think is a really good idea um, and a good thing to do in life. But I've had in the past, you know, like many people, I think not sustaining habits and practices that I really want to do and will sustain me. So firstly, coming to the realisation that's not unusual and giving myself some grace has then given me space to figure out what is my approach and to not overload myself. So as I say, I used to struggle with keeping things going. As an example, I used to wonder why my plants were dying. I'd watered them. And then I'd be like, hang on a minute, I watered them three weeks ago. <laughs> like, that's not, <laughs> they haven't just had water. And I remember sitting at my desk working one day, looking at the plants, thinking that and thinking, oh, so this actually is similar to other things, like with my business practices and habits. I was doing the same. I'd done it. So why wasn't there fruition? Um, and, and figuring out that there was something there going on in me that I need to figure, figure out. So what I did was I, what I do I, with my coaching clients. I use my approach and approaches that I use there. So my self-created model is root deep, stand strong and branch out. And throughout that, my principle of working is awareness choice power which is something I picked up when I used to teach antenatal education when we've got awareness of what's going on in ourselves we create space for choice and then and for wiser choice that suits us and serves us once we can get to that we then have more power so my most important habit is probably checking in with myself and that that's the awareness piece. And I always think that's the biggest piece of work. So what do I want? What's going on in me? How's my brain getting in the way? <laughs> so I know I want aliveness. I want to feel alive in life. I'm so lucky to be here. And I want to feel agile. So yes, things are tough sometimes and things like that, but I want to be able to figure my way through them. And I also want to be physically agile. 
I want to feel empowerment. I want to be courageous, which I understand to be being able to feel fear at the same time as and, as keeping going forward. I want to very much like Julie, I want to be playful. <laughs> um, and all I want all this for me, but also for my family, my friends, my clients, my business. And my key things in all that are my values and having a north point, something to live towards. And I know I have evidence of this. I have one example of evidence of checking in with my wants and, and what's going on in me, the most important things I want to live towards have, have given me great behaviour change. So I used to smoke tobacco years ago and I did for years. And when I realised that actually what I want is, is to be a strong individual physically and mentally and emotionally and that smoking was taking that from me. It was like zapping my power. That was the game changer for me. And that's how I was able to change that habit. Um, and literally sort of breathe easier and open up because I was taking my power back from something, a habit that was taking it away from me. So my values being playfulness, courage, making the world a better place in, in the way that I can, being responsive, taking responsibility, having connection. All that is part of the root deep in my in my model. So it, that anchors me. It brings me alignment. They're, they're my drivers and my motivation going forward. But so is my north point. So my north point is that I want to create deep smile lines in old age. And I can check all sorts against that. And that for me is if I've got the root deep, stand strong and branch out, that's the branching out. That's what I'm growing towards. So this responsibility, literally the ability to respond. I know I'm in choice. I can override my brain. So if, you know, in the morning when it's cold, like it was frosted this morning, and my brain starts going, oh, no, it's much cosier and warmer in here. Why would you want to go outside? I know I can go put that to the side. I can listen to a different part of my brain and my body to make a choice that is part of a broader, as I say, informed decision-making. In terms of the way I build habits, part of my choice is that I, I know I prefer a rhythm to a, a, like a fixed routine. For me, rhythm, um, you can change the pace on it. It can be dynamic. It's, you know, the syncopation can shift. Um, and with the feel of the rest of the music going on, it will work with that as well. It will lead it, but it can also shift depending on the mood. So, it, but it holds everything. That rhythm still holds everything. So I still, I experience that to be a very anchoring. Um, but it can ebb and flow. It can flex like a tree. If it's well rooted with those values, then it can flex with the wind, and it's less likely to snap. So, and also the way my days are. So, you know, a couple of weeks time, I'm in Newcastle for two days. There's no way I can do the same practices that I would in the morning on a day where I'm working from home. But I know I like to, my, like my key anchoring practices or habits, I guess, are the beginning of the end of the day, my intention there. So in the morning, when I step out of bed, I stand up and I breathe in and then breathe out. And I'll, the breathing in I know is releasing um, adrenaline to my heart to get me going. And the breathing out, there's acetylcholine, which I really can't say very well, <laughs> the renewal. <laughs> and it's bringing that balance myself. And how many times I do that in the morning depends how many times I need to do that on that morning. And sometimes I won't. I'll get out of bed, I'll go and do something else, and then I'll have to stop myself because I know the difference. Because it brings me aliveness. It brings me that responsiveness, the grounding. And I'm much more likely to then do the other habits and practices that I want to do. I have a much stronger um, experience of that. Right then, how do I want to make the most of this day? And then at the end of the day, before I go to sleep, I really like to check in with my state of being and think about how I want to be and how I want to send myself off to sleep. And I, this is a really hard one, I think. And I came across the word just last week, I think, of bothness. So Susan Davis, who she wrote the book Emotional Agility, and she's all about like, this sort of checking in, being with and, and shifting through states of being. Um, and it, sometimes at the end of the day, we can be in a really, really tough place. And that can be because of 
global stuff it can be about you know cost of living money worries it can be to do with the person next to you in bed <laughs> it can be anything and this bothness is around we can feel that state of where we realistically are but also as I experience it tend to ourselves so I know through my breathing I can give myself some nourishment I can nurture myself um, if I'm, you know, if I'm in a state of stress, then I can look after that and think about what I need to calm down, what I need to put down because I can't deal with it at 10 o'clock at night in bed um, so that I can have a good rest as, as better, you know, the best rest that I'm able to do on that night. And if it's a day where I'm in such a sort of blissful state, then I, I marinate in that. So again, that's another check in. I also a key thing, uh, beginning and end day habits are water. Simpl the, water's the best drink in the world, I think. And it, it brings simplicity and the grounding for me. It's, it's a nourishment. So other than that, the choice comes in again. If like my other practices are like an a la carte menu. <laughs> I, for my body, for example, I, I run, which is quite a new thing for me. And I really love it. And I never thought I would. I, was, I always thought it was, I didn't know why people did it. And I started swimming, which has been a, overcoming a a mild amount I'd say of fear and discomfort with water in my face and all that kind of stuff so I've been working on that and yoga so those are my sort of key things I do for my body but depending on what my day is like what my hormone state is like and what I need as to you know I like to do them a certain amount of times a week or every two weeks but it shifts and it ebbs and flows in terms of work, it will be similar. I've got an allocate thing, but I, it's, again, it comes back to the check-in. In the first beginning of the day, I think, what is the best thing I can do this day? How can I serve people best? How will, you know, at the end of the day, how would I like to feel? But my other practices there are consciously just switching between work and parenting and taking that buffer, the breath, whatever it is I need to do, so I'm not just sort of moving between them without having switched off from one. Then I also check in with nature and the seasons. So throughout the year, throughout the phase of the day, checking in where I'm at, what I need with my energies, what's going on, but also looking for answers. So in springtime, that sort of like possibilities sparking and all that kind of stuff emerging. There's so much to feed off from it in winter, so much to feed off the need for rest and, and looking after myself. So I build where where I came from a place of not really sustaining habits but telling myself I should have all these habits and put a pattern of them in place all at once I'm much more now building them up bit by bit and then also the shifting in response to myself those seasons a family my business and then being realistic about what I can actually manage and what's serving me are there any shoulds in there telling me I should be doing something else so I love embracing the ebb and flow and having that rhythm that can that can flex and I think flexing I think you know we know it's it's essential for life for parenting business but I'm, I'm in perimenopause now and it's it's like it's all in capital letters now I need to be able to flex <laughs> to look after myself and not just survive it but to, to to do my best with it and to look after myself and thrive on on the days that I can thrive so again it's yeah coming back to those roots holding fast with those so that then I am in choice. So now these days, I've got happy plants. <laughs> I water them regularly. There's no set days that I do it. Um, but rain's like that. You know, nature, it doesn't rain, rain every three days or, or once, you know, every Sunday or whatever. I think my grandma used to, there were certain plants she would water on Sunday. So my habits, my practices, they're work in progress. They're imperfect. They're involving. But that's like me. I'm, I'm doing that. And um, and sometimes I slip out of them. So when I slip out of them, my choice is to check in again. What's going on in me? What do I need? Come back to myself and then come back to those strategies. Think about my values, what I really want, what I'm growing towards. My root deep, stand strong and branch out. And give myself grace because sometimes we need to put things down so I'd like to con I, I like to practice and sometimes it's like a day later I think yeah perhaps I didn't need to keep doing those things <laughs> hindsight's great but but sometimes I need to put things down and my choice then is that I'm doing the right thing for me I listen to myself and I 
faith that I'll pick them up again. And I do, I have, you know, I feel myself strengthening. I feel myself being more agile and alive and really feeling blessed. Um, and that's my overarching thing. There are tough days, there's tough weeks because that's life and we all have that. Um, but I use my physical intelligence more. I'm a more impactful coach. I'm probably a better mum. <laughs> um, and I smile more. So hopefully those um, nice big wrinkles are come in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bernie, it was so great to hear what you got to say. <clears throat> and I can resonate so much with your way of being. And, you know, and I love that you talked about not being perfect and, you know, which, of course, is is how we are. We're perfectly imperfect. And uh, that life's like that. And um, the rhythm, that was just lovely to think about, you know, kind of following a rhythm. And on a practical level, because it was yeah. so much you shared. You were talking about a glass of water first thing in the morning. Yeah. So is that on your bedside? Yeah, so it'll be there all night. So if I have a a, a less sleepy night, I'll probably be drinking it in the night. <laughs> and then you're getting up, up out of bed. You're literally breathing in and breathing out. Is that when you set your intention for the day or whatever you like to call it? Yeah. Um, I start to set the first layer of my intention, I'd say. So I put, you know, it's a plant my feet, really stretch up, wake everything up and feel strong, you know, that we can remind myself we can switch on. So I set an intention for stepping into the day. Right. Because obviously, then, oh, I interrupted you, but but obviously well, to start a new habit, it's it's remembering, it's having some sort of structure, isn't it? So clearly, yes. a glass of water by the bed, you know, an instant reminder um but it's getting into that habit to start with which which can only become a habit if we if we um are, are aware that we we want to implement that habit so so literally it's a glass of water the getting up stretching and you're saying that's the first layer of your what you intend for the day and then you carry on throughout the day do you just regular intervals asking yourself yeah yeah i think because i <laughs> you know teenagers to rouse and I'm trying to instill that you get yourself up but I'll still come and say good morning so I step into their rooms with an intention of the way I greet them and then um <clears throat> yeah so this morning uh quite early I had I had a run so I stepped out to that in, with an intention and I, I decided last night I was going to do it I like doing it early because my brain can't think too much about it when I when I do it in the morning <laughs> um and then stepping it you know into work with an intention as well and check in of what I, you know, this morning, obviously this was my focus. I had some tech issues, as you know, but it, this was my focus and, and I was really excited about it and um, an intention of curiosity about what was going to come up and what questions you were going to ask me. <laughs> Brilliant. I love that. So, you know, what you're saying about running just then, you know, doing it early in the morning before your brain's got a chance to go, what, the, what are you thinking? Why aren't you thinking? About Do you have your, your kit? by the bedside you know do, how do you make it easy for yourself do you lay it out the night before or what you know is is there a structure that you yeah have? so yeah yeah. I, yeah so I do prep that absolutely I have because yeah as you say less thinking um less actions for your body to yeah the clothes are there ready um and downstairs my shoes my um high-vis jacket at the moment and um my strap from my phone they're all there in one place near the door excellent to go the the simpler the better it, absolutely. absolutely yeah if you see it you you know, it, it reminds yourself that oh yes that was the plan and obviously yes. you know when we have a, a somebody we can go running with or someone that we can be accountable to then that helps which is why people come to you for coaching so yeah. thank you so so much brownie for what you shared i really love listening to what you had to say if any of you would like to find out more about brownie i'm sure you would all her links are down below, as are mine. So thank you ever so much for watching, listening. If you've enjoyed it, please subscribe. And if you've really, really enjoyed it, then why not share it? So all there is for me to say is thank you. Thank you.